So why are we talking about this? Good question. Uh, trigger warning. If you are triggered by the 2020 election, thinking about it, think about Bernie's campaign, the hope, the promise, the defeat, the uh, quick going out, dying, um, all the lives lost as a result of him not winning. Uh, then this this might be a tough listen. Also, if you are if you think this is stupid bullshit and is uh, electoralist uh, liberal nonsense or whatever, we will have you can skip this episode. You have our permission. We will have goodies for you coming up um, that you will enjoy. We should do this disclaimer every episode. Hey, everyone, if you think this episode's stupid bullshit, you can listen to a different one. I'm sorry about that. Right. Sorry about it. It literally applies to every episode. <laughs> yeah. You really nothing... can't please all the people all the time, especially right. in this niche subculture that we are in this in. industry. Right. My God. That's right. But if you are in the mood for some juicy tidbits, some tea, some gossip, some funny moments, then this is the podcast for you. I'm in the mood for funny moments. Spill Good. the tea. Spill the tea. We begin in 2016. This guy, Ari Robinhoft, was... So he was a uh, staffer for... Actually, for Harry <clears throat> Reid. It's kind of an interesting uh, case because this is someone who worked in for like some hunger nonprofit and decided that that actually wasn't affecting very much. <coughs> Someone who's not very ideological, but has progressive values, comes from a working class background. He went to work for Harry Reid, who, of course, is not someone I am a fan of. I danced on his grave when he died. Uh, I think he's a piece of shit for what he did in 2016 and just for, for voting for the Iraq war and just generally having uh, being a milk toast uh, a Democrat. However, if you look at the scope of progressive politics in America, there was a, a while where his Senate office, who sent a majority leader in the in the Bush and Obama years, and he did take advantage of like the move on dot org moment. And he did bring grassroots people into the process. Right. They were often to the left of him, um, but he act, he did at least utilize that. And, he, you know, there were worse Democrats, as you know, uh, if a clown ever danced on my grave, I would be furious. <laughs> it's, it's the most disrespectful thing you can do to a grave, probably. Yeah, they should be doing those on the war crimes in Russia. You know, those right. trials, <laughs> sending their Slavic clowns in to <laughs> disgrace the dead. Yeah. I'm not Slavic for the record, um, but. And I'm not saying you are, but do you regret okay. dancing on this man's grave now that you've uh, recanted your statement? No, it was in Nevada. You know, that type of thing is not frowned upon there. Um, I'll take your word at face value. <laughs> so after he worked for Harry Reid, he was on Sirius Satellite Radio. And uh, one of the opening passages in the book is him um, on election night 2016. and. He's one of the first people to call it for Trump and his bosses are like, what the hell are you, are you doing? That's a bold prediction. And he's like, this isn't I'm sorry, but uh, she your gal's not going to pull it out. Um, and it's like his a plan, little lady went to lunch. <laughs> his plan was to actually open a progressive think tank to push. Clinton, President Clinton Madam President Clinton to the left. And obviously that didn't work out. So uh, he goes to work after 2016 for Bernie Sanders. Um, and he gets to know him uh, very quickly. He has some interesting sort of background on him. Um, they He talks about how Bernie does not uh, seem really that different at all in private as he is in public, except for cursing he'll say damn in public but not fuck which he does say in private a lot and apparently he leans his he has a habit of leaning his head back on his shoulders and letting the syllables drag out of his mouth with the word damn that's funny yeah he's like clay uh, clay uh not clay higgins, higgins? what is that 
No, it, the it, senator I, from the wire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was not Clay Aiken. That's the that's the <laughs> American American Idol. Guy, yeah. right? How many Clays can we possibly have <laughs> in our yeah. mind bank? Clay imagine Shaw. The Clay, Clay Shaw. But imagine the American Idol guy going. Jeez. Jeez. Clay it's Davis his is his name. Clay Davis. That's Thank right. you. Thank you. Okay, that was actually uh, when Clay Aiken lost on season two. They let him do a consolation <laughs> song. They're just saying, she. Yeah, how beautiful <laughs> she is. Yeah. So, <laughs> a musical <laughs> interpretation of season one of The Wire. Yeah. I had a friend whose mom growing up was in love with Clay Aiken and literally sent away, paid through the mail for Clay Aiken Clay from a fan club. It was literally Clay that had Clay Aiken's like like this on the package. That sucks. Yeah. That is a first draft uh, <laughs> merchandise idea. <laughs> I don't they think it was even more time. I don't think it was even from him. This is back when you had fan clubs, you know, and so she like <laughs> became a male member. You know, the, you pick Clay your Aiken favorite Aiken. gay singer on television. Yeah. They send you Clay. <laughs> it has nothing to do with him. Yeah, that kind of club. <laughs> it's Clay, so if you use it, no, no longer has his face. Right. Yeah. Do you? So, you can make it in his face. Anyway, Bernie Sanders cursing in private is very funny. 